This episode contains discussions including weight gain, food and diets, recounts of fat phobia, religion, familial relationships, military culture, body shaming, and political affiliations. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the Body Story Podcast, a show about the way we're navigating the world and the bodies we've been given. I'm your host, Tiffany Eller, and I believe that if one person's story can change the way you look at them, a collection of stories may be able to change the world. Today, I'll be speaking with Jonathan Stratton, an analyst, tabletop gamer, and maker. He spends his weeks either playing with numbers, data, 3D printing, or painting. Today, we'll be talking about what it's like to be a man in the age of body positivity. Let's get into the episode. Hey, Jonathan. Hello. How are you today? I'm doing all right. How are you? I am good. I am so excited to talk to you because you are our first male identifying uh, guest on the podcast. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Uh, a unique, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you told me that your body story would be titled Hiding in Plain Sight. Can you kind of give me a little bit of background as to what that means to you? Yeah. Uh, so I personally felt like I, I, especially with like family photos, things like that. Um, like I don't have a tendency to show up many places. I can probably count on my hands and toes, the number of time, like photos I have of myself, even growing up, um, to this day. Um, and so I've always kind of had this feeling of like, I always kind of just blended into the background and I never had until very recently with this podcast never really even necessarily strictly thought about uh like the issues i have with my body uh, and body positivity so it's kind of a twofold like i have felt myself that i have been i hide in plain sight quite often but then also uh issues with my own body have been hiding in plain sight for myself so you hiding in plain sight was that a conscious decision on your part? Like, you, like I don't like being in photos or was it something that you just found to be true after a while? It's probably both subconsciously, especially growing up. I was uh, very uncomfortable with attention. Um, I think that there's definitely something to drive back there towards some childhood stuff. But I, I think that I've always, and less so nowadays as I've worked on it, but but I've always had issues with like any time the focus is on myself, I get uncomfortable or nervous, and it was doubly so as a child. So I definitely didn't go out of my way at all to be on camera or noticed um, in any kind of sense of that way. Just the the by happenstance. Uh, I do think there is some by happenstance uh, in there as well, as my family. Um, my dad does do photography or did, um, but he only can do his hobbies if he can make money off of them. (laughs) So, and I mean, that happened, got worse and worse over the years, but that kind of, so like, we didn't have a whole lot of photos as a family in general. Um, so what few we do have, I definitely, whenever I, if I have to go find like a new picture for like LinkedIn or for a profile or something like that. I always like look at my photos I have and I'm like, Oh, well the last, like the most recent photo besides the one I took for this podcast uh, of myself I have is from my sister's wedding in like 2014, maybe 2015. Um, And does, does that picture accurately reflect what you look like now? Probably not. I'm definitely thinner at that, at that point. Uh, I've put on some more weight since then. Uh, and it's also like not very, like I got it off of Facebook from my sister's photo. So it wasn't even one that I personally had. Um, I, so it's I know little, that all too well. <laughs> yeah, it's compressioned and not very detailed. Um, so like I, I know that I don't, I'm not, I feel uncomfortable taking photos of myself because um, I don't like how I look currently. So there is some of that in there. So I definitely, like, it'll happen. 
like photos I, I yeah, there'll be tournaments and things I go to for my hobbies where I'll show up in the backgrounds of photos or part of certain events but I kind of ignore their existence if that makes sense yeah have you always felt this way or has this been kind of newly developed as your body has changed uh so I can say that it at the beginning when I was younger uh I didn't really notice or care because uh, growing up I was a fairly thin child probably derived from my parent my mom's genes um and then but I didn't really I wasn't really positive about my body image up through high school it was just more of a didn't have anything terribly negative about it just I did wasn't positive I didn't find myself thinking about myself in a positive way but uh then college i was in the rotc so that meant physical training three times a week at you know 5 a.m in negative 20 degree weather so i became (laughs) yeah uh east idaho can be kind of a, a nightmare in the winter uh but i put on you know quite a bit of muscle uh was probably in the most fitnessly wise like strongest i have been in my life Um, So I think I felt pretty positive about myself then. You know, there's something to be said about those endorphins (laughs) that are released in the whole physical exercise stuff. Um, And then after leaving college, I uh, joined up in private security, uh, doing just uh, security for buildings, uh, and uh, got into a desk job in that and during graveyard shifts. Uh, and that graveyard shift plus sitting at a desk all night, I developed bad habits in eating. Uh, I was ordering Domino's probably once every two days. Um, and then that persisted for two years, maybe two and a half years. And those are hard habits to break. And plus being a graveyard stuff, you're, if you're staying up all night, uh, your metabolism starts to crash uh, your body doesn't react to the whole graveyard shift very well, or at least mine didn't. Um, and so that's when I started putting on weight. Um, and for the first probably year, as I gained probably 30, 40 pounds from where my weight had been at before, like I noticed it, but as it was just kind of, kind of taking place of the muscle that wasn't being used before, it didn't really change my body shape too much. And then I've just been steadily gaining weight since then. So that would have been 2012 to now. Um, uh, I think I'm probably about a, probably about 80 pounds heavier than I was in college. And so that's, that's I'd say, pretty uh, drastically affected my self-image. Did that happen just gradually? Was this something that you were like noticing and you're like, oh, I don't like how I look? Or... Did it just hit you one day that like this change had happened to your body? How, what did that look like? Yeah, uh, I'd say it's kind of actually a mixture of all three at different stages. Um, when I first noticed that I had put on weight, like where it was physically recognizable, um, my first thoughts were like, "Oh, like I can, I can get rid of that if I want to," that kind of thing. Um, and then clearly, I didn't do anything about it <laughs> as I continued to gain weight. Um, and then there was just kind of like a general unease. It wasn't like it was subconscious. I would, I continued to use photos uh, for anything from my college days, even though at that point I was probably 30 to 50 pounds heavier, somewhere in there. Um, I pretty much solely used pictures from those days. And then uh, this would probably be about the 2014, 2015 uh, year is when I kind of really acknowledged it uh, consciously that I've gained enough weight to the point where I I have to recognize it to myself that I I don't necessarily like the way I look anymore uh, which is yes kind of like one of those like mo- defining moments I guess where you just like oh hey like I am no longer just subconsciously seeing this. This is something I have to recognize to myself. Yeah. I remember for me when I was in, when I went to college, I gained 30 pounds in the first year and 
I didn't really notice it on myself, but I had a boyfriend. And at one point I said, he, he mentioned that we needed to work out or something like that. And I said, well, yeah, I, I put on some weight, but it's not noticeable. Right. And he looked at me and he said, well, kind of. And that was like, that was when I felt the most shame about it. Cause I hadn't even really noticed that I had gained that much weight until he said that to me. And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I guess my point is, is like, it hits us all differently. Like for you, you were the one that noticed of yourself, right? Yeah. Well, uh, my mom, and this is, we're going to kind of, I guess, backtrack a little bit in my history, but so my dad, uh, he grew up athletic, did football in high school and college a little bit. Um, and then when I was young, this is before I could remember, um, he had started putting on weight. Uh, and so by the time I'm like capable of remembering back to, he was already uh, maybe even heavier than I am now, which is about, I think uh, like 270 or something like that. Um, he, uh, so all my life, my dad has been uh, heavier and my mom and her side of the family are all pretty, pretty like, I mean, they're, they're rancher people. So they're all very like, tall and thin um and so i can remember even back to when i was probably eight or so uh that we would our family would go on diets um even though none of the kids uh were heavier it would be there to support my dad so there was always kind of a stigmatism against weight in my family i think um uh and it hasn't really my dad is They'd make progress and then lose progress over the years. Um, but my mom would kind of, that was always on the, like when we talked about dinners, it was definitely there as a conversation topic. Um, and when I started putting on weight from the graveyard position um, and I would see my family, my mom would make comments about how I would just look uh, sickly or unhealthy and, um, and I think that part of that might have been her referencing my weight gain, but also like the graveyard position. I can, I can recognize that it was also like my, my body doesn't handle that time shift very well. And so I probably did look, I was definitely paler because uh, growing up, I spent a lot more time outside. So I had a light tan, but nothing really considered a tan, but compared to where I was at that point where I had spent pretty much all, my time awake at night i was very pale and gaining weight so she would say things like oh like you just don't look very well you should you should do these things to try and help that and i until later i didn't really recognize i was just like oh well she's just overly concerned mom because growing up my mom has always been one of those people who's very concerned about the health or well-being of her children um, to the point where sometimes she would just be like, hey, like, you might have this. Let's go get it tested. Um, that's kind of deviating out another path of conversation. But Well, yeah, but it's it's still your body story, though. Did that um, mentality where you were getting checked out for these different things that your mom suspected you had, do you feel like that affected the way you thought about your own body? Growing up. I would say probably not so much about my body, but just my mental and emotional health. Um, growing up, aside from a few instances of like sickness, where she would say like, "Well, maybe this is something way more serious than it actually is," um, it was mostly stuff like going get tested for ADD, getting tested for dyslexia, um, or thinking that I had, you know, chronic depression as a teenager things like that which uh, funnily enough happened later in life and <laughs> wasn't involved at that time period um so it was always kind of there like there was always kind of this mentality of like well maybe i do have something else going on uh, that, that still follows me to this day to some degree um it's also tied heavily into some uh stuff in and around uh, being part of the Mormon church as a child, um, but not believing it 
as a kid and i maintained mostly that throughout until a few time periods in high school and then a little bit in college where i convinced myself i believed but that eventually always stopped but growing up in a fairly orthodox mormon family uh not believing was kind of it's very taboo um and being someone who i've always been very sensitive to how my family feels their feelings and trying to avoid causing any kind of discomfort for them uh so i hid it from them for well since my very young years till uh, after college that i didn't believe and i always felt like that meant there was something wrong with me that i was incapable of tapping into this uh spiritual side that my family is very important to them uh my mom's side tracks their history back to some of the founders of the church so it's very like when i say orthodox it's pretty orthodox <laughs> did did your lack of belief you kind of mentioned this but did your lack of belief make you believe that something was wrong like with your mental state oh yeah uh, i can actually remember a very clear instance uh my my family doesn't do emotional well and doesn't do emotional connections with each other very well uh, my growing up uh, instead of having like the times where i think most people probably remember having intimate conversations or developing that emotional relationship with their parents. I remember times where uh, my dad is a, a manager. He's very much into management techniques. So what we did as a family to talk with our parents was we would have one-on-ones on a weekly basis. Um, we would sit down in my, my parents' bedroom. They would sit on their bed and you would sit against the opposite wall. And you they would just ask you questions about how things were going on um what you were feeling and they'd bring up concerns and stuff like that so it was very like this very regimented uh management style of a family dynamic um and i remember having a conversation with them one night where i had been feeling like there was just some darkness inside of me that had to be causing why i couldn't believe like you know i was also a moody teenager at the time so there's always that like bit of edge tossed in there um but i had i had these feelings like hey like something has to be wrong with me there must be something either dark or evil part of me that i can't reconcile and they just like it's immediately shot down because no parent is going to tell their kid like oh well we should explore these feelings they're just immediately like no like you're fine don't worry about it but there's no because they, they would just always felt like there was no door to broach these kinds of topics um, to actually address what I was actually feeling, it was always either like, like as I mean, parents they they feel they've been around, they feel like they know kind of what's going on with when dealing with kids, and so there's that kind of sense of you're the they're the authority, so you just kind of take what they say, um, and especially in my family being very very authoritative in that sense, my my dad had growing up like he has. And to some day, he still does a little bit, has some anger issues, but they're self-anger issues. He, mm -hmm. When things start to go wrong, he gets mad at himself. Um, and that frustrates him even more, and so it kind of spirals. Um, and so growing up, I became very sensitive to when he would start to get angry at himself. Because no kid likes to see their parent go through some kind of emotional trouble so i would always do my best to avoid causing any kind of any kind of emotional upset to cause that spiral um so you'd have that kind of situation of like dad's the authority so you don't try you don't upset him in any way you try and keep him calm kind of thing so your dad had he, he was more authoritative and you responded to that so now you're an adult, you have autonomy over every bit of your life. But when you hear these comments about your body from your parents, does your dad ever make comments about your body? Not as much. Uh, I think he also, like he definitely will every once in a while. And when he does, it is actually more negative than my mom. Um, but I think that's a partial like 
because he you know like i said before it's very much of a self anger thing that he has so i think that there i can't really say whether yes or no on this but my experience and just kind of looking at it i feel like there is some degree of like there's got to be something involved on his end with when he makes comment like he sees something in himself that he sees in me when he makes those comments yeah um, like that projection yeah um but yeah they, they like my mom was the quiet authoritarian because she's always the one who like my dad uh like uh, i don't know the word but like she he hands the power to her when she takes it right um mm-hmm. so she's the quiet authoritarian she's she always been a very quiet woman all through my childhood very reserved and that has a lot to do with her growing up which we don't need to get into her her life story <laughs> until maybe maybe she wants to talk about it but um so she's just a very quiet but like she has very strong feelings about things uh so when she does speak it's like she has something to say uh, my dad is very much more extroverted he's the opposite of the scale he likes to talk he likes to get to know people um you know he gets he gets much more emotionally engaged with people uh so it's it, when he does he'll say things just offhand and off the cuff a lot more than my mom will so it's like my mom will say something and it's very direct um and so you know to kind of listen to her she, what she's saying is something that she actually really is really thinking about my dad i feel like sometimes is a little bit more like just rolling with it off the cuff kind of if that makes sense yeah and so now when they make so it's mostly your mom that makes comments Mm -hmm. on your body um where you're at with your relationship with them is do you feel like you i don't like using the word triggered but like have a have an unconscious reaction um when when she says these things like do you feel like you can say anything back like hey that's not appropriate or that hurts my feelings or do you just have to kind of bite your tongue and and know that she means well uh yeah uh, and that's something i actually hadn't really thought about but yes i have i have to bite my tongue around my family uh with a lot of my life uh we don't like there's every once in a while that if it's just my mom and I by ourselves out hiking, cause that's, that's kind of the thing where we actually will interact more is if we both go hiking, but um, like then I can speak my mind a little bit, but I'm very much on eggshells when it comes to talking about my personal experience or how anything that they would do would affect me negatively. Um, I will let comments usually just slide. Um, either just, not respond at all and just kind of nod along or you know just you know not really engage in that conversation point because uh while i it's definitely gotten better for me over the last probably four years as i've kind of made more of like understood myself better and have gained more control over my life um i feel like i have more of a position to either talk to my parents or uh, disagree with them but even today but especially in the past like uh, disagreeing with my parents is something I have a very hard time having that conflict point um, I it usually just like I will shut down uh, just kind of drive inwards not really talk very much um, kind of just try and avoid the conflict altogether rather than engage in it and then do those conversations where you are kind of shutting yourself down, do they stick with you? Do they affect you after you walk away? Uh, some do more than others. Some I'm able to just kind of, I'm so used to them at this point that maybe they're rather than sticking, this just so far into the subconscious at this point that I don't address them anymore. But that, that'd be stuff more involving like religion and politics more than my body. The body ones definitely stick more. Um, but like when she's, when my mom says, Hey, like you should do this. Um, I'm still very, a lot more inclined to say, okay, well, let's, let's go do that. Let's just try this new thing. Or like, you know, when she says, okay, like, hey, let's do a health challenge as a family. I'm like, okay, like, yeah, like I'll jump right in. Uh, I think part of that is still that, like that influence that, that she has over my life that like, yeah, okay. Like my mom said something and that. That means that I should 
look at that much more seriously. But if in the case of of doing like a health challenge, for example, Mm -hmm. does it get you excited? Like, is it something where you're like, okay, yeah, we'll do this as a family. Or is it like, I'm just doing this to make my mom happy. Yeah, I would say it's probably a mixture of both because I, I still would say that within myself, I, I still have a very strong core of like, like I should be exercising. I should be losing weight. I think that comes from, it comes from that small time I spent to that military background where like, that's a very strong influence. Um, I mean, a lot of my founding years of when you develop that personal identity, uh, I was at a like much uh, lighter, I guess that wasn't as heavy. Um, so I think that I still internalize that idea that I need to lose weight. So when she proposes something that adds that extra weight, that like, Excitement isn't necessarily, I'm not, I'm not ever really thrilled about exercise yet. Um, I wasn't even thrilled back in the military days. It, it's not necessarily my favorite activity, but I still be like, okay, like, yeah, like I already know I need to do this. So I should. Um, but then if I ever like fall off the wagon, like I don't want to bring up that, like that failure to my family. Uh, it's very hard for me to address it. I've gotten a lot better these as over the years, but even like now where I've just recently, we had a health challenge. Uh, I got my eye surgery for LASIK, um, which I'm sure we can probably tie back into some body image stuff. But uh, I, I, I couldn't do exercise for the first two weeks. Um, and I just felt off the, the wagon at that point. We had another like, month and a half left of the challenge and I just I didn't get back on it and I didn't want to talk about it to my family I would like to talk about your military experience and how Mm -hmm. that has informed like what you consider to be I I guess a good body for a man because that's kind of what we keep coming around to is that yeah and, and not just in your story but in general, when we're talking about body shame and body positivity, it's a lot of comparison. So can can you speak on that? Like, do you find yourself comparing yourself to other men? Oh yeah. Uh, I, less so I would say of like, and maybe this isn't typical. I don't know, but from my experience, I don't, I don't compare myself to like celebrity style bodies. Um, but I compare myself to a physical fitness side of things um, because it was always scored in the military. And I'll I'll preface that like, I didn't go through with signing up. I wouldn't consider myself part of the military. I just kind of hung out with them for about six months. Um, You you experienced a little bit of the culture. Right. I experienced the culture and I, and I actually really bought into the culture because it was my lifeline. I went to a um, a Mormon school uh, in East Idaho um, as a non-religious person hiding it. Um, and only because I had gone through a depressive episode and I had decided I, I wasn't doing anything with my life. My family said, Hey, we'll pay for it for free. If you go to this specific school and being cheap, <laughs> um, I was like, well, Hey, free school, I'll do it. Um, not the smartest choice I've ever made in my life because that school really, like did a number on me, uh, but like the ROTC group was my kind of my lifeline. So I really bought heavily into the culture because um, it was the only people I could really relate to at that school. Um, it was the only place where I found one other non-member. Um, not that I could say anything because I was still hiding uh, who I was at that point because the school would kick you out. If you're, a, if you're a member of the church and you decide to uh, no longer be a member of the church, you get uh, kicked out of that school. And it'll, all of their schools do that. Um, and you'd lose any progress. They like hold your like credits and everything. It's real fun. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but so I'm, I'm part of this group now where like being in shape is something you talk about on a like three times a week at minimum. Um, it was a five day five day classes you had morning physical training on monday wednesday and friday and then you had your kind of more classwork 
style classes where you talked about military theory and stuff like that on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, but those Tuesday and Thursdays would also include like drills and going out into the field. And so there was a very, like there's a lot of pressure in the military to be very physically fit. Um, you have to score a certain amount on these physical training tests. Um, if you like kind of start to fall behind, like they, they, I will say there's a very good camaraderie with what the I experienced. So in a way it's very positive reinforcement like hey like good job keep going you can do it um but it is very much like you need to get into this like peak physical shape you need to be able to do all these like very taxing things um and to kind of like there is some value associated with that in the military um the people who were heavier set were definitely like pushed harder um to do more to get into that that physical shape that needs to that the military i mean the military does require it for a reason like it's you're doing you know running through the like we go run through snow for over uh probably close to like two miles through fresh snow which if anyone's done that before like uh, you'll wake up the next day and your calves won't move anymore like it's uh and there's that kind of like same thing that how kind of like corporate america like there's a pride around not getting enough sleep at night i'd say there's also <laughs> in the military at least what i experienced there's a lot of pride around like hey like you worked yourself so hard that like the next day like you couldn't move like which, well that's not a very healthy thing to do there's still that like that like yeah like i did it like the machismo kind of uh factor there oh that's so interesting i have forgotten about that part of culture <laughs> yeah <laughs> i choose not to be around that kind of stuff so it's yeah uh, and i think it's still it still is part of an identity piece that i have like um while i don't consider myself to have ever been in the military i still took part in that culture for even though it was only six months it was during some years where it was the only thing i had so it is still kind of part of that it's like I got a little like piece of my core being in there somewhere that like there is part of me that still wants to get back into that kind of shape, like to be that, like that there is some value associated with that. And do you find value in the way you look now? I had definitely have a very hard time with it, which is why this like uh, to kind of, I guess, help audience. Cause I think that you and I have talked about this, but um, like my, journey into this idea of body positivity is actually very new it's only really when you started kind of talking about it online that i even started really looking at it myself so we're talking maybe a handful of weeks that i've really started to think about like is it okay for me to look at myself and say that i like i can have a positive view on my own body at this time like because up until this point i definitely have not um and i now i'm kind of in this like unsure stage of like my past says no there are other influences in my life saying like yeah well maybe it's okay to like still be positive about yourself but still trying to figure out the the weeds in between yeah what are those questions sound like like what's something that you're questioning about your own body positivity today yeah i mean so i i come from that background of like either my mom being very health conscious, very like pushing that we should be at a very specific body type or from the military pushing that um, from, you know, your general health classes you get during school. Like everything that I grew up learning said like, Hey, like you need to be in this specific type of body shape or very specific aptitude of fitness. Um, And so that's really all I knew. And because I, somewhat fit that mold growing up i never had to really come to terms with what that means to a person who doesn't fit that and it isn't until now later in life um that i've had to address that with myself so the questions i have like and it it may sound kind of i don't know it's against the 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 terminology of body, body positivity but like hey like is it healthy like Uh, Does that mean that I should, if I'm not healthy, uh, does that mean that I can be positive about how I look? Uh, Or should I be by being overweight or at least heavier? Should I be negative towards that? Right. And 
men aren't really, I mean, I think that now they're starting to become more a part of the conversation of this body positivity, but you know, in just this couple of weeks that you're exposed, do you feel like you're on a better path to accepting yourself the way you are? I'd say that I've, uh, now that I'm thinking about the questions, it's something to address. I think I'm going to need more time, more talking with other people who are kind of, kind of, uh, can lead kind of down that ideology, like talk about it more with me and help me understand what it really means. Uh, like from the outside of the body, because like I wouldn't consider myself at this time like in the body positivity community. Um, and from the outside looking in, like, especially like I definitely see with, with women, it definitely feels like there's more support for it. Um, cause I, at least from my, the people I know, uh, men body positivity seems kind of like, they, like there's like the dad bod thing that came up over the last couple of years. Um, but I think that there's a very like big section of the male population who finds that to be more of like a, like a fallback or almost like, like joking about it. Yeah. Like less, I would say less joking, but more of like, well, you can go with dad bod if you can't do like physically fit. Does that kind of make sense? Oh uh, yeah. It's like Which... a, still has some shame attached to that. Oh sentiment. yeah, definitely. Um, and I think that's where I kind of see it is like, I see there being like a, like shoot, like shooting for the stars is to like get uh to that peak physical fitness kind of like type of body but like if you can't do that you can always just end up at like that dad bod that kind of that secondary goal um so yeah i mean it's it's definitely not a healthy way of looking at it i can definitely recognize that um but that's kind of what i've seen from my outside looking in because i mean i have growing up with the people I did and being like in that military culture for a little while, I have a lot of people I know through social media still who don't necessarily hold the same values I do now. Um, they're still very, uh, I'd say less of the, I think we can agree that the more left or liberal side of things tends to be more involved in those talking points than maybe the far right conservatives. But I have a lot of that still conservative group of people I know and still interact with every once in a while. And their views on it is such a different polarizing thing that it's kind of interesting to see their point of view on what's going on. And then the opposite end kind of both in my experience with social media. So is that specifically about, uh, I don't know, masculinity, I guess. Um, do you see a lot of conversation about like what it means to be masculine or are you just talking about more progressive um, movements or initiatives? Yeah. So on the pro more pro progressive side, I definitely see conversations about it, people talking about it, but it, I definitely also see more of a, I hate to use the word echo chamber in this case, but there's a lot of people who, all talk about it the same way it's very positive which is good but it almost feels like there's not a space for someone to like be like hey like i'm questioning this like should i be able to feel okay about myself like it feels like it's just very overwhelmingly positive and maybe that work that probably maybe works for more people and then just for myself i have such a intellectual bent on talking about myself that i i want to be able to address that without being like hey like super supportive positive and maybe that's just the focus being on me and then i get that same nervousness from before but then on the f uh the far right side the more ultra conservative or just conservative groups i see very they less talk about they don't really talk about masculinity but they definitely represent it in like other forms or media like there's very much like a hey like here's a bunch of photos of like military members out doing fitness or there's here's like that very like like that's you can tell that's what the like ideal form is if that makes sense mm -hmm. um just by the way that they talk about it and represent it in their other conversations yeah i could see that 
Um, one thing that I found helpful if you're not feeling like body positivity is your community yet because you're like, well, I'm not quite in that space. I found that searching the hashtag body neutrality, um, that's a term that is for people that are like, okay, well, I'm not quite at the point where I like, I love the way I look or I love myself, but I can accept it. Like I accept that I'm here and, you know, let's practice self-like today and then we'll practice self-love tomorrow. So that might be a good resource for you to follow if if the body positivity is a little too much or it's a little too foreign. Yeah, it's mostly me walking into a space that I am completely unfamiliar with. Um, all of my, my hobbies, the other groups that I spend my time in, it's not something, it's not a whole lot of crossover um, with the progressive movements for the most part. Like we're talking about tabletop gaming, which every once in a while the conversation get brought, gets brought up, but it's very like, they're, they're a little behind the, the eight ball on this. Like they're still having conversations about representation of women in the, the hobby, stuff like that, where like, like there are groups of us within the community who are like really pushing like, Hey, no, we need to make sure we're inclusive of these, of these other groups. Um, and they haven't quite reached the point of like, okay, well now let's start talking about some of these other like more progressive ideas. Like we're still working on some of the fundamentals there. Um, hmm. maker spaces, like thankfully it's becoming much more prevalent. Um, I think they're being more progressive with it, but like you're talking about building things. And so you're not, I don't see a whole lot of body positivity. There's some, some stuff that does happen, but it's more of a, Hey, like I'm doing a social experiment through making, uh, kind of more art house or art form kind of idea. Um, so yeah, like I, my experience, I don't really, I didn't until like kind of your, my interactions with you that I didn't really ever really run into body positivity as a, as something outside of just like something you run across on Reddit or something you see or hear on the news of someone like some, them talking about expose on this new progressive movement. It's always, you don't run into it in your own, my own personal life until I happen to now. Do you think it's something that you're going to seek out more of now? Or is it just now that you're exposed, you're like, cool, now I have something to think about and maybe bring into these new spaces? Well, I'm going to be following the podcast. <laughs> so there's that's kind of like <laughs> my first step uh, into this is to listen to, because I find I get more out of listening to personal experiences, um, like having conversations with people and getting to kind of peel back kind of that puzzle that is a person um and kind of understand where they're coming from it because then i can really apply that to myself better so i think this will be a very strong way for me to interact with the idea of body positivity um which will be uh i don't know lost my train of thought again but that's okay so I think we're kind of getting to the end of our time. Is there anything that you would like to leave our listeners with? Any final thoughts? I mean, I guess I want the reason I said, yeah, I'll go ahead and be on the podcast is kind of that it's, I want to hopefully bring it across the point that like, yeah, it's okay to be unsure and work your way into it. I kind of want to maybe help be some of a proxy for some people who may be just starting. Um, and I also wanted to learn more myself or kind of get an idea of, see what people's reactions are to maybe my story. Um, I think that it's, uh, it's something worth thinking about. Definitely worth exploring for people. Uh, and I hope that it will help keep people like keep away some of that, uh, negative social pressure that some people might be might get especially among men to uh, avoid the topic altogether yeah definitely well thank you so much for being with us jonathan we yeah. have well i have loved hearing your story and i can't <laughs> wait to share it with others <laughs> well, thank you
If you enjoyed this episode, please consider supporting the show at patreon.com slash body story podcast. You can support the body story podcast with as little as a dollar a month in exchange for behind the scenes recordings, updates, and eventually free merch. Your support helps us grow this show so these stories can reach more people and end body shame around the country. If this message aligns with you, support us today at patreon.com slash body story podcast. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode. This episode was made possible by our Patreon supporters, Stephanie Baird and, hey, Jonathan Stratton. The Body Story Podcast's editor is Daniel Vogt. Our producer is Amanda Ray, and our creative director is Emily Fisher.